Thank you for joining us here uh, today. My name is Tim Dowd. I'm the interim CEO for UW Medicine and interim dean for the UW School of Medicine. Mental health has been the silent public health crisis for a long time, often unspoken and historically underfunded. When you look within Washington state, the prevalence of mental illness among adults is among the highest of any state within this country. <clears throat> and that situation has only worsened through the COVID-19 pandemic as the demand for these services has continued to increase. Here at UW Medicine, we care for patients living with mental illness every day, whether they come to the psychiatric emergency services at Harborview Medical Center, whether it's a senior with dementia being cared for at the Gero Psychiatry Unit here on the UW Medical Center Northwest Campus, or patients presenting to their primary care practitioners with depression. Under the leadership of Governor Inslee, the state has taken a strong and ambitious stand to address behavioral health challenges within our state. One of the key initiatives is the creation of the Behavioral Health Teaching Facility. This was a shared vision with the governor, our Washington State Legislature, and UW Medicine leadership. This building, which is just behind us, represents a new and unique approach to behavioral health care. Here we will provide additional inpatient bed capacity with 150 new beds that will provide the continuum of psychiatric care for our patients. In addition, this facility will serve as a teaching facility for the next generation of behavioral health professionals for our state. And it will also house the first of its kind 24-7 telepsych consultation service, which will extend this resource across our state. Now, UW Medicine's mission is to improve the health of the public, to improve the health for all people. We are incredibly proud to partner with the governor, with our legislative colleagues, with our state to address the behavioral health challenges that we face together. And we know this will have a profound impact on our patients, our communities, and save lives. So thank you uh, for being here with us today, and thank you, Governor Inslee, for all of your support and your leadership addressing this behavioral health crisis. Thank you, Doctor. Thanks for your leadership, for all the great work that's going on here. Uh, we're here today for two purposes. First, to celebrate the happy event of the state of Washington again leading the nation by building the very first teaching dedicated mental health teaching hospital in the history of the United States. This is certainly worth celebrating and we are well on the way of getting this, this hospital built. I look forward to its opening hopefully in June 2024. But secondly, we're here to announce that we now need to take the second step in building a mental health care system in the state of Washington that is befitting this century. We have done much in the last couple of years on mental health, but we know we have to take a second big step forward. And I will be calling on the state legislature this year to help us join us in those second steps to truly bring a modern mental health care system in the state of Washington, a system where our children can get access to crisis mental health care, a system where we have both housing and support system for the chronically homeless so we can get them off the street into long-term housing, a system where we have, for those who've had chronic mental health systems or problems, a system that really befits uh, the need to have treatment befitting to their needs. We believe we can build that system, and I will be asking the legislature in ways I'll talk about here today in joining me to actually build that system. And I do want to note, we have made substantial progress, even in the face of COVID, even in the face of increasing mental health challenges. I want to thank those who've helped today, uh, to date, uh, particularly uh, Representative Frank Chop who've helped lead us in the bill to make this hospital uh, possible, and Rashi Gupta. I don't know if Rashi's here today or not. Rashi, who's been a leader for many, many years to help uh, this effort. You know, we started this five years ago. Five years ago, we started an effort to transform how we do provide mental health, and we've made substantial progress uh, uh, to date. 
uh, but it has not been enough, obviously, and that's why we're here today to say that what we have started needs to continue. Now, our transformation has been around uh, two central premises. Number one, we need to get away from the concept of having just mega uh, facilities in one or two places across the state, but instead to build community-based systems that are available closer to where people live and go to church and go to work. And we are well under our way in that transformational system of how we deliver mental health care system. But the fact is that demand continues to grow. I'll give you an example of that. Just since 2018, there has been a 60% increase in the demand for competency restoration services. That is when people come into our criminal justice system to be able to restore their competency so they are in a position to stand trial. Uh, this is an enormous uh, increase in a very short period of time, and we have been doing our darndest to try to increase the capacity of, the, of us to provide those systems. And I'll talk about some new ideas about how to accelerate how we can handle those problems uh, today. So I want to talk about five things we will be asking the legislatures to do this year. First, we want to expand the availability of intensive services for our children and our youth. We know that families are suffering inordinate wait times to get kids who are in crisis into crisis services. We have several initiatives underway, one of which is the CLIP program. This is the Children's Long-Term Inpatient Program. It has started, but we need to expand it significantly so we actually have the capacity for people to get their children into this crisis intervention. And we want to expand our navigator problem, uh, program so these families have a navigator to help them navigate through the mental health care system. This is an expansion of existing programs, and we need to do that if we are going to give these families uh, what they need. And we're going to do this through our state Medicaid plan so that more families can have that care. Second, we have to fully fund the new hospital, forensic hospital, at Western State. We have no options in this regard. We have to continue this building project, both our need to help people through competency restoration and through helping people in general restore their mental health. Since 2016, uh, we know we've completed or, or, or started the completion of many community-based systems around the state. But this anchor hospital has to get done at Western State. It is not cheap. It is an expensive construction project. But if the state of Washington is going to meet its obligation, we have to continue this uh, project. And we have to make pedal to the metal to continue building these community-based systems as well. Third, and this is very important, we have to increase the pipeline of talented people to provide mental health care services. Having buildings is not alone. We need professionals who are duly licensed and educated to provide these services. And we know there is a nationwide shortage of people to provide these services. Vacancy rates in our state community facilities are dramatic. Uh, obviously, this teaching hospital is one piece of the puzzle, uh, but we've got to continue to look at all pieces of the puzzle, one of which is compensation. Look, we've got to be competitive in our salaries and benefits that we provide people so we can recruit people in the state of Washington to actually do this work. We'll make suggestions on how to do that, but we need the legislature to be able to step up to the plate and fund these compensation uh, improvements. Fourth, we've got to continue to build a robust community-based sense. Since, 20, uh, uh, since 2017, we've started building mobile crisis teams across the state of Washington. We need to expand those mobile crisis teams, uh, both in geographic and, and general scope. I'm proud of our 988 crisis network plan. We've got to continue to build teams to actually support that plan. And we've got to obviously increase our investments in opioid and fentanyl treatment programs. We need more specialty care for people to get off these very dangerous drugs, 
that are expanding dramatically, unfortunately, in our state. I want to note that this is tied to our housing programs at well, as well. We know we have twin crises in our state, both in mental health and in homelessness. And in solving this, we need to solve them together. Here's why I say that. We can't simply solve this program by just having warehouses for people who are currently homeless. If we're going to get them off the streets permanently, they have to have support, both in mental health and in chemical addiction programs. We're doing that. I was really excited in Spokane a few days ago to see opening of the Catalyst Center, which is 100 uh, beds for people to get help with mental health and chemical addiction programs right on site. That's the type of model that we have to build to succeed on if we're going to have end long-term homelessness, and we're committed to getting that job done. Fifth, we have to get our handle on this competency restoration program that I alluded to. And when I say we, I mean we, not just the state of Washington, but local communities as well, local prosecuting attorneys, local uh, judicial systems. They need to get involved in helping solve this competency problem. We can't just sh sh uh, you know, shun this or put this on the backs of the state and think we can solve this problem. The fact is we have too many people that are in our criminal justice system that belong in our mental health care system. And we need local leaders, local prosecutors, local judges, local sheriffs and police chiefs to help us do that, to get people into the mental health care system rather than putting them in the criminal justice system and then end up spending millions of dollars trying to restore their competency so they can stand trial when they need to be in the mental health care system in the first place. Jail is not necessarily the right place for these folks if we're going to solve this problem. So we're going to be proposing ways to uh, bring all of us to the fore to help uh, solve this particular challenge. So, in conclusion, we have come a long way in the last several years, but we have a long ways to go. And this is a year to do two things. One, focus on homelessness, and second, homeless uh, focus on mental health. We need to do both at the same time. I've offered five things that I'm going to ask the legislatures to step up to the plate on. This is a year for big progress in the state of Washington. So congratulations to everybody working on this. It's going to be a good year. Now, with that, I want to hand the podium over to Anna uh, uh, Nepo Museno. And uh, Anna, I hope you will pronounce your name correctly, because I'm not sure I did. But she's from Nalmany, and I want to appreciate your leadership. Anna. Good afternoon. My name is Anna Nepomuceno, Public Policy Director for NAMI Washington, and I am thrilled to be here today. I want to thank Governor Inslee for this opportunity to speak and for his continued leadership in behavioral health. We are still in the middle of a behavioral health crisis that began long before the pandemic. Individuals with behavioral health conditions continue to struggle to find the help and the care that they need in their own communities. NAMI Washington is proud to support critical long-term investment in smaller facilities located in community settings. We know that families play an important role in effective treatment, and people recover more quickly when they stay inside their support networks during recovery. Every Washingtonian deserves to have treatment and services close to home. We are grateful for Governor Inslee's continued focus on ensuring that every community has high-quality treatment options in beautiful and therapeutic settings. While we are pleased with continued investments in crisis and inpatient services, we know that we need to do a lot more to ensure that every Washingtonian can access treatment before they reach a crisis stage. We need increased access to outpatient and community-based services. We need to continue to develop our workforce so every individual can find the trauma-informed, linguistically appropriate, and culturally responsive behavioral health care they need.
Last, we must improve our prevention efforts by ensuring every student learns the skills that promote social, emotional, behavioral, and mental health wellness. Giving people the skills they need to care for their own mental well-being will reduce the strain on our crisis system. I want to thank Governor Inslee and his staff for all of their amazing work, and we look forward to continuing to work together to improve the lives of individuals living with mental illness. Thank you. I am proud to introduce Lillian Williamson. Thank you so much. Um, hello, thank you for having me here today. It's such an honor to be here with you as we discuss this year's behavioral health priorities. My name is Lillian Williamson and I'm a behavioral health activist, a co-chair of the Youth and Young Adult Continuum of Care Policy Work Group, and a student at the University of Washington. I really want to thank Governor Inslee for asking me to join today and also for his continued leadership in the field of behavioral health. Behavioral health has always been a pervasive issue for young people in our state, but post pandemic, this issue has escalated into a crisis. Substance use, overdoses, suicide, and behavioral health issues as a whole have drastically increased over the past few years. And in that same time, access to services has drastically decreased. This has, of course, affected the most, uh, most affected the most already marginalized young people in our state. And as a young person myself, I see this every day at my school, in my friends, and in my community as an LGBTQ plus person. Washington has had for years an outdated system of behavioral health that's focused too heavily on institutions in crisis and not enough on community and preventative care. And with the significant escalation of the demand for care, broad systemic change is necessary to address this growing need. Steps like the creation of the prenatal to 25 strategic plan committee, which will craft a long-term multi-system plan to address Washington's behavioral health system for children, youth, and young adults are vital, but they also aren't enough. Strong supportive and funding for for behavioral health services this legislative session, especially addressing the issues of young people who are stuck in hospitals, supporting the growing workforce, um, supporting and growing the workforce by reducing barriers to entering and remaining in the fields, and providing targeted investments to indigenous young people are all vital steps forward. Thank you so much. So are you speaking? Have we had all our speakers in? Lisa, do you want to say anything? You want to see me? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, just uh, I appreciate Lillian's leadership on this. I'm going out to Ingram High School that suffered this horrific shooting uh, a few weeks ago to, to my alma, alma mater here just in the next hour. And I know that these students are asking us with a great urgency to improve mental health opportunities, not just because of violence, but because of the needs of, of these young people. And we need to listen to those young people. We started that effort last year by putting tens of millions of dollars in our budget, which is increasing the number of mental health professionals in our high schools and our middle schools. But we need to continue that effort this year, and I look forward to Lillian and her voices being heard in the state legislature uh, this year. With that, we would be happy to stand for questions of the media. If, if you have some, you can direct them to anyone here um, this morning. Any questions? <clears throat> your budget recommendations for any of the five priorities that you outlined today? I can. We will be doing that next week. So it all will be revealed next week. I won't give you the dollar figures today. But they will be significant. Look, this is a big problem. It needs a big investment. And you can't do this on the cheap. So we will be proposing some very significant investments in this realm to actually get this job done. And it's important that we do this throughout the spectrum. There's no sort of silver bullet when it comes to mental health. You need buildings. You need personnel. You need access throughout the system. We need a comprehensive system. We need the legal, the criminal justice system to be more successful helping people to be in the mental health care system. All of those things are needed, and we will touch all of those. And we're going to ask the legislatures to step up to the plate. Every family is touched by mental health issues at one time or another. It is both urban and rural, east and west. We know COVID exacerbated a pre-existing problem, and we simply have to act. So we will re reveal our budget next week. I hope you'll come. <laughs> Also mentioned the importance of local politicians, local prosecutors, yeah. and officials being a significant part in this change. Is your office creating a plan to work with our local officials at all, or is there any groundwork for them? 
Yeah, so one of the problems our state has is, is we have a lot of people who have obvious mental health challenges that result in some frequently what you might consider relatively minor criminal conduct. Somebody yells at somebody in a sidewalk. Somebody maybe pushes somebody because they're having a mental health crisis. And we need to get those people in the mental health care system, not just the criminal justice system. And so we need the local community to help lead that effort. We will propose some legislative changes to inspire them to be more creative on how do people help them through these mental health crises rather than spending millions of dollars in the criminal justice system, having people, you know, sort of warehoused in jails unnecessarily where it's really not the smart thing to do. I think Washingtonians understand that we have people in our community having mental health crises through no fault of their own, and they need treatment as much or more than just criminal sanction. This is going to save a lot of money for Washington taxpayers, and it's going to help people get better a lot faster. So we'll make uh, some proposals in that regard this year. Anything else? Thank you very much. Happy holidays. We're going to go for a tour now. Thank you. Thanks, Lily. Thanks for your leadership. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Good luck to us all. Appreciate your comments.